Facebook. Um, maybe I'll wait for people to join me. I'm just gonna fiddle around. Come here, you. Pop. Come here. Come Good boy. Let's have a look. Oh, looks better. Okay. Let's just see if anybody's with me. Let's get some treats. Hang on. Yay. Yay. Okay. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Some people are joining me. Okie dokie. Oh. Joining me, I'll wait and see just to make sure I'm got audio. Um, okay, cool. So, can somebody just give me a thumbs up just to let me know, or message just to say that they can hear me before I start wittering on? Good boy. Good boy. Oh, excellent. All righty. So, good evening, everybody. Um, just swipe the comments, I'll come back to those. Okay, good evening or good morning, Linda. Um, so I thought I would do this quick live. Um, obviously, I've been launching the Jungle Book, which features Reset. Good boy. Yeah, that's your name. Good boy. And um, Hottie and Jungle and a year into their life. And thank you very much for those that have signed up and supported. Can I? Um, so I thought I would do this impromptu live um, with Reset on an exercise that will, uh, or a behaviour, that really, 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 really super simple that anybody can do um, that has... Uh, um, so many far-reaching um, benefits. It's such a simple thing. It's something that one of the first things that we, you know, we, uh, I was taught with the dog years and years and years ago, um, and it's something that I, I like to create a lot of intensity on. And uh, as I say, it's such an easy thing to train. And that is the behaviour that we're going to work on is the dog, what I call the look. So the dog focusing intently on something, whether it be food or toys. Okay. Um, I'm also going to have a little play around with some other stuff that I've been working on with him um, and what you can do in small confined spaces so obviously i'm training in the living room so suggest some ideas on what you can work on so um the behavior is the dog to intently focus on very good boy um something out in front of them some people call that forward focus i call it the look but also it can benefit you it for a, an obedience dog <clears throat> if you want them to focus on uh, a send away or retrieve um or for a agility dog focusing forward, for an IGP dog to focus forward on the helper and not look at you, um, good boy. For a nose work dog, to the dog to stare at something intently, loads and loads of benefits from the sports side of things. But also from a um, behavioural point of view, if you have a dog that will stare and focus on something intently um, and ignore everything else around it, good boy. That will... Um, I've got a little thorn there. Um, that can override distractions, it can override other dogs, it can override people. If you want the dog to focus for um, a veterinary exam, etc., um, it's a great thing to teach, okay? So all you need to do to three is um, a toy or food. I'm gonna show you Burst version. He loves his toy, so I'm gonna use his toy. How you start this off is first, you're gonna do some engagement with the dog. Um, and then you're going to snatch the toy off them or take the toy off them and have them just focus on the toy intently for a split second and then release them. Okay, it starts from the dog having value for the dead toy on the ground. Uh, I'm going to show you that stage first. Okay, so I haven't switched him on. So he shouldn't be really, he knows obviously we're going to train, but I'll switch him on um, and then we'll make a start. For this, I'm going to have him on a lead because I can create a little bit of resistance and opposition reflex. The more I pull back, the more he'll drive forward. Okay, so... First thing I'm going to do, oh, you've got fleas, you've got fleas. Ready, steady. Yep, good. So he switched on there. That's a really part, key part of his foundation training is to switch on when I ask him. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to thank you. I'm going to move the toy on the ground. Hold, get it. Good. So you can see there, uh, the movement's really keeping his interest. Good boy. And then I pause for a split second and I then let him drive the toy. Okay, let's do that again. Ready, today. So move, move, move. Get it, good. Okay, so he, the movement is keeping his attention. Thank you. Let's do it with food as well. Oh, what did I make it up? Okay, good boy, let's do it with food. I'm gonna show you that with food. Okay. Ready, today. Good. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so I let him just stare at the food. Okay, ready. Oh, 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 oh. Good. It. Good boy, okay. You can see him there really focusing on that food. I'm gonna go back to toys for a reset. Ready, today. So I can build in a little bit of suspense. Ooh, 
can build that intensity up to having it in my hand as well. Thank you. Whoa. Get it! Nice! Like a little stare at that toy. So again, you grab his collar, just do this way. Look. One. Get it! Nice! Good. Okay. So if, for example, I had a distraction or something to crunch you me, I can give him his ready. Look. Good. Get it! Good. He'll freeze and stare at that toy. Good point. Yeah! Everyone, isn't it? Okay, let's do it again. Give me a call! Look! Yes! One. <laughs> not... Oh, I missed it! Good! Good. Get it! Good. And building up that intensity to really stare at that toy. Oh, you missed it! Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Get it! Yeah, that was better! That was better! Toy. Do you want to do it with this? Three, one, two, three. Oh. Beach, huh? three. Wait for him to drop his eye line. Not strong enough. Oh, you're back. You got me. I got it. I got it. That was a bit crappy on my part. Ready? Get it. Good. Get that tight. Alright, so simple, simple, get it? Simple, simple behaviour. Teaching your dog to stare intently. Some people call it focus forward. That'll do. Good boy, come here. That was good. Some people call it focus forward. Um, uh, value for dead toy. Same principle, the dog intently staring on something, okay? So, other things that you can work on in small spaces are, okay, position changes. Um, simple thing to teach in... Um, Small confined spaces where I'm looking for fast reaction. This you have a toy. Oh, I know. Aha. This is the best one. Oh, it's the best one. Okay, so I'm going to work on his position changes. So, um, Reset was a puppy that I bred and I had back when he was five months old, and obviously he's ended up staying. Um, come here, puppy. And um, I retrained, I changed his words that he was previously taught. Um, just because it was, a, I wanted to create a clean association. So he has some weird cues uh, for his position changes. Um, good boy. He has some weird cues for his position changes purely because I wanted to redo them, right? So, ready, steady, go, good, good, okay? So, um, actually, this is a great toy to use for your foot. Look, what, uh, training. Come here, Hoyle, come here. Oh. Yeah, you can see the real intensity there. Chaser toys are great for that. Thank you. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Ready? Look. Get it. Nice. Super, right? So I'm going to go back to my position changes. So, um, let's see. Thank you. Ready to do. Okay, get it. Nice one. Good. So I'm going to just do one position change. Reward the dog. Thank you. Ready to do. I see. Yep. Good. Get it. Good. Ha ha ha. Good. So just giving him a reminder of each cue. Oh, it's hot. Hey, get it. Good boy. Super. Good. Ready? Take you. Asi. Good boy. Get it. Nice. So he corrects himself nicely there. Thank you. Let's switch back to food. Ready? So I'm going to start asking him to do position changes. Asi. Good, so nice kickback stand there. Twist. Ready. Done. Get go. Oh, I missed it. Oh. So if you make a mistake, no big drama. I see. Good boy. Get go. Yep. Good. Ready. Head. Yep. Get it. Good. Ready. Head. Good boy. Pop up. <laughs> yeah. Head. Good boy. Get go. Yep. Good. Super. Ready. I'm gonna go boy! I see! Yep! Good! Nice! Ready, ready. So I like to keep them quite busy when they do position changes to build up animation and drive into those positions. Ready, ready. Oh! I see! Yep! Good! Nice! Let's do two changes now. Let's do ready, ready. Whoa! I see! Yep! Yes! 
Sweet, good. Ready, let's go back to this toy. <laughs> Shh, ready. Get good. Get good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Gonna throw it away. Hey. Yep. Good. So working on quick responses. Do this again. I'm gonna smack him. That's the only answer. Whoop! Yeah. I see. Yep. Good one. Yeah. So keeping him really, really on his toes. Oh, it's getting hot in here. Get it. Woo. Good boy. Get it. Okay. Get it. Nice one. Good boy. Come here. Okay. Three. Twist. Yep. Good. So I'm adding a, um, a little um, behavior that isn't in an obedience sequence just to keep them listening. Thank you. Ready? Head. Get go. Yep. Nice. Good. Good boy. Super. Ready? I see. Get go. Yep. Good. Okay. So now I'll go back to individual again. Ready? Oh. Hey. Get it? Good. So adding some extra twist there. Get it. Come on. Come on. I know. It's a hard one. I see. Good. Get go. Oh. Good. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Ready? Get go. I see. Whoop, whoop. Ha ha. Woo hoo hoo. Woo hoo hoo. You missed it. <laughs> Ready? So I've got to remember what I did. Get go. Good boy. I see. Oh, so he's getting tired and he's flagging, but never mind. Ready? We can do one more. We're going to get that right. Three. Good. Get go. Good. I see. Want to help him? Yay! Super! Yeah! Praise him, try again. Ready? Head. Good. Head. Ha ha ha. You're getting confused. Ready? Head. Yay! Get go. Oh, he's a long time. Never mind. <laughs> so working it through now. <laughs> that little challenge. Okay, good. Ready? Get go. Get it. Good. I'm going to break it down and make it easier for him. <laughs> yes. Ooh, thank you. Smack him. <laughs> Ready? I see. Good. Get go. Get it. Good. I'm going to stop there. Good. Good boy. That's fine. So my note to self would be working on those other transitions. I want to keep him all um, enthusiastic about them and work on speed. Um, and keep it really, really sharp. Thank you. Okay, that'll do. Good boy. That was clever. Oh, was that good? Three. Yay. Good boy. Okay, so just some simple things there. Position changes and the dog intently focusing the look, focus forward, whatever you want to call it, on a toy which you can use to teach your dog to mark an item or for... Uh, a stand for exam, or if it's a show dog, you can use it to teach a stand. Um, it's hot in here, isn't it, darling? Loads of things that you can play around with that exercise, and then building in fast position changes and keeping it fun. Let's give you a drink if you're hot. Okay, I'm gonna um, pop him out, give him a drink because it's sweaty. I'm sweating like anything in here, and he's hot, and I'm hot. And then I'm gonna go back online and see if anybody has any questions, all right? So I'll see you guys in a minute. Good boy, that was good. Well done. Good. Okie dokie. So, hopefully people will be joining. I'm just going to log on and have a look. I think there was a couple of questions on uh, the last live. So, let's have a look. Wait for a couple of people to join me. Okay, cool. Alrighty. So, let's have a look at the previous live. So I'll put the volume down on this. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go through the questions on the um, on the previous thread. And if you want to ask questions, by all means, I'll pick them up here. Okay. So ah, uh, cool. Linda Linda Loder asks, do you have a preference for two syllable cute? commands for DC, what about using the name? Yeah, my preference is to use two syllable cues, so um, the dog's not around, so it's not a problem. So giggle, assy, head, okay? Um, that's my down cue, let me grab my coffee, um, with that particular dog. So um, I do have different cues for the same behaviours with different dogs, it all gets very complicated. 
I just adjust this a little bit. Hang on a second, let's just take this down. Bear with me whilst I adjust this. Oh, trying to move. Hang on a second. There we go. Okay, cool. Ah, oh, that's better. Okay. Um, so yeah, in regards to cues, can you, somebody just let me know I'm... Okay, hopefully I'm coming out. Uh, just give me a thumbs up just to let me know because I think it just lost connection there for a second before I start answering your question. Okay, cool. All right, good. So, cues. I put a lot of thought into my dog's cues before I um, pick them. And I like a cue that, um, you know, sounds... Um, jovial and uplifting depending on the behaviour and doesn't obviously sound too close to the dog's name um, and I prefer with certain things to have cues that um, have two syllables um, but for example my down cue um, is short and sharp and snappy because that's why I'd like the position to be adopted by. Um, I do use the dog's names um, to give it extra emphasis um, so I can say, uh, great, sit, or great, I see. Yeah, so it, um, to articulate it. I'm mindful more of changing the variation in my tone. So my cues would be for, um, it would be something along the lines of, hey, great, sit, us, or, or, or um, giggle. So that it, it sounds very different, yeah? Um, so I think that's really, really important to make the intonation, certainly when you're thinking big distances, you know, busy environments and so forth and so forth. Yeah, so put some thought into the queue. Um, yeah, I'm not, I would use the dog's name. It wouldn't, wouldn't concern me. I think that's a good thing to get their attention yeah, and to keep them uh, and to give them again an emphasis. But um, I want the dog to understand the queue without the name and the name then supports the dog, the queue if and when I need it. OK, um, so. That's a bit nice hair, yeah. Yes, I had my um, post-lockdown haircut, so feeling much better about myself. <laughs> Interesting how the mistakes, how they make mistakes when they start to get tired. I noticed that with my dogs too. So yeah, that's a really, really classic thing. Um, he's a young dog and he puts everything he has into his training. Like he plays very intently um, and he doesn't have the physical stamina that an older dog does. He's not even a year. Um, he's a couple of weeks off a year, actually. So he's still a baby and he's a big dog and he's gangly and he's growing. Um, and he has, as in comparison to his sister, um, he's a lot bigger than her. But his stamina is coming domestically out in the walk. But um, when they're putting that much into the work and they're concentrating and trying to focus, that's going to drain off them. So just be mindful of that. That's why when he, he made those little errors, it's not a big drama. He's just giving me information again, like Hottie did the other day that I need to be breaking it down a little bit more for him. Um, he's very, very willing and very much wants to train. So I know if he says, I, um, you know, I don't, I can't do something I don't understand is a genuine reason, which is most the case with most of the dogs. Yep. Um, I use Q mark. Yep. What would you, what we will sit down and stand cue. So for that dog, Wendy, my cues are um, head, which is down, giggle, which is stand, and assi, which is sit, which is French for sit, I believe. Um, I have different cues with different dogs, as I say. Um, so it varies, like, you know, punch, his cues are in Finnish. Um, Fire has different cues. I, I shot myself in the foot with cues with, um, with my dogs because then I have to teach everybody another cue, which means everybody has to listen to it. Not the smartest of moves when you have multiple dogs um, to have different cues for different dogs because then you have to teach them another cue, which means it's a generic down cue and a generic sit cue. Gets a bit complicated. You have to remember it, but it is what it is. All right. Do you think training the look with food could ultimately help them to not to saving food they find outside? Help them not saving practice as after a while. They're not to saving food. Jeanette. I'm not quite sure what I mean by that. So do you think training the look with food could ultimately help them not to, I think it means scavenge food they find outside, um, if practice outside after a while? Um, I think I understand the question. I think the, the question is, do you think the look will help them not to scavenge for food? Um, not directly, um, but what um, the 
because of my dogs are raised with it's your choice i have to give them permission to take food off the floor they understand that food falling on the floor isn't just a given that they can have it they have to be given a cue i get it so that gives them clarity of when food is on the floor you're allowed to take it when i give you permission so the food being automatically dropped on the floor and a toy which is why actually um reset was a bit conflicted he was like oh am i allowed to look at it should i be looking at you because they talk to offer a response to get the reinforcement so i have to go through this process of saying to them it's okay for you to look at the food and fixate on it and you are going to get it a second to remain intense on that reinforcement um so does it necessarily that in itself probably won't help, help the dog stop scavenging but it's your choice which is susan garrett's um game um i i think most people that follow reinforcement based dog training will um be familiar with it's your choice if not go to dogstat.com um i think it's dogstat.com or susan garrett dog agility google that and it's your choice and you'll see loads of content about how to teach it's your choice um so uh, funnily enough i've been going over this today i've been shooting content for another huge project that's going to be launched later on this year um and part of that is it's your choice and how many layers get built up from it's your choice so if you are familiar with it um I, I i'm sure you understand the benefits if you're not go to susan garrett's blog or her youtube page or their website and find out about it's your choice because it underpins so many stuff okay um let's have a look where are we at it's like do you lose um let's have a look oh where's all the questions gone um so sorry as in thanks we know that one okay sorry as in okay i'm lost in my do you use blue asked do you oh i've lost quest where's the quest he's here do, 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 do. why do they keep disappearing let's have a look i think my computer's being awkward bear with me uh yeah forward focus is invaluable for agility training um why am I missing? I've got 17 comments, but I can't view them. So let's have a look. Let's try it this way. I'm going to put the volume off. Than that. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's scroll down. Okay, nice to use. Um, do you think we're trying? Okay. How would you transfer the look from toy to a jump pole? Um, okay, so sorry, as in the start lines, the dog is focused on the pole, not the handler. So concentrate. Okay, that's a good question, Amanda. So Amanda's question, how do I transfer the um, the value for the toy into the jump? So it, as with anything, my dogs are trained in a way that they understand in order to receive the toy, they have to do the behaviour. So the, the behaviour, whether it be picking up a dumbbell, looking at a target, um, doing a hand touch, is a means to an end for them. So how I shape them to focus on a jump is... Um, Put the jump in front of the dog you can lure the dog so putting the toy out in front of the dog would lure them to look at the the, the the focus forward which is a way to teach it and it's something yes if you want the dog to be say for example if you're doing a grid or you're teaching a jump skill and you wanted to you know work on set point things like that having a toy out on the floor great thing to do but if i want the dog to understand to look at the toy and uh, sorry look at the jump and break eye contact i would shape that behavior so i would have the dog hang the collar the dog looks around wanders around it looks in the direction of the jump mark that and throw the toy the other side and then release it to go and get it and then build that up so the dog understands to look at the jump in expectation of the um toy um being dropped the other side alternatively if you release them from the collar and allow them to take the jump and click that the dog's understanding that the behavior chain or the sequence is look at the jump dad will release me i take the jump i get reinforcement so they understand that the jump is the means of which to get the toy that will probably be more effective than having a lure out in front of the dog because often what can happen is when you take that away the behavior deteriorates okay so hopefully that's answered your question okay um how would you use the same cue for attention for different exercises for example use the same focus cue on a goer as you would an exam to look um so stand for exam so yeah look uh, means to my dogs focus on the thing in front of you so it might be so i don't teach a watch cue i don't teach my dogs to look at me and, and on, on a verbal cue um we i used to do that many moons ago but it's there's a there's a way in which i train now i condition or train them to give default attention so um it isn't i don't use 
as I say, the Q watch. But I do use the word look. Look means look forward, focus your eyeline forward and on something. Yeah, that might be um, me about to throw something. That might be a target out in front of them. That might be a jump, for example. But it means don't look at me, look at that thing. OK, or don't watch me look forward. OK, so you can absolutely use that for a stand for exam, a show dog, have the dog look hand focus on the hand somebody goes over them click and reward the dog and you can progress that to adding distance etc um, or placing something out in front have the dog focus on the item move laterally from the dog so the dog's understanding to focus on the toy or the food and not on you okay so yeah definitely something that you could you could use yeah do you use a different word for straight sit from down then from the down to sit as is the different do you use a different word for the straight sit from down then from the down to sit. Um, Lou asks, do I use no in sort? I don't. I use the same cue. Um, some people do change the cue. They have a different cue for the transition. I don't. Um, my premise being is that my dog understands sit. Um, they should put themselves in that irrespective of what I'm doing and what they're doing. Um, because they're taught to do a, a rock back sit, yeah, that's a, if they're in a down, they have to do that. And if they're in a stand, they have to do that. So it's, for me, it's the, sim, it's the same action. Some people would train it differently. I don't. I would just use sit and, and ask for the dog to adopt that position. OK. Uh, OK. All right. OK, let's have a look. Let's, would you rather? More questions might think backwards or forward in this. OK. Okay, I mean stand, sit from stand. Yeah, no, so I would still use the same cue, Lou. Yep, same cue, just reading these comments. My entire male, sorry, my entire 11 month old BC takes a good 10 to 15 minutes to focus when there's females around while training. Any tips to make that distraction time minimal? So at his age, that's really, really normal. So um, reset, um, I've just had two pictures in season back to back which has been very very challenging for him he's 11 months old obviously the dogs have all been separated and shuffled etc i'm able to do that at home um where the girls are in season aren't with him but it's definitely been um challenging for him because he's you know a hormonal teenage boy um he has incredible focus as a dog i have to say but that's not the same six months 12 months time that might deteriorate um First thing I do when they're in the adolescence is I ensure that um, I'm hand feeding, I'm doing all my foundation skills, working on their recall, and also giving them permission to um, um, go and bitch and sniff. I don't stop them, I just give them permission. So go see, go sniff, in allowing them to do that. And also not asking too much of them when I take them to challenging environments. So if I was to take, not that we have any at the moment, but if I was to take Reset to a dog show, I would ask him for simple things, simple things that I knew he could do very well that didn't require too much thinking and that set him up for success. So even just a fun recall, even just the name response game, even just collar grabs, simple behaviours that he's going to be successful in and he's going to receive massive amounts of reinforcement in those challenging environments. Um, once he had that confidence, you'll find that with hormones, it will subside. You'll have a real intense rise in hormones where they're really, really, really challenging. At that time, I tend to back off any sports training when they're really, really hormonal and I focus on domestics and about confidence building. So it's a natural progression that when my dogs are in adolescence, either male or female, I tend not to do too much progression in terms of their sports training or teach them any new skills when they're like that. The simple reason being is that um, their brains are going to be elsewhere. With the females, they can be spooky and they can be a little bit hormonal and some of them can lack, be lacklustre and oversensitive. So me trying to teach them something new can become very challenging when they're in that height of um, adolescence. So I tend to focus on domestics um, and that means things like, you know, crate games and loose lead walking and coming back when they're called and socialising, appropriate socialisation. I tend to put my emphasis on that stuff and back off sports training. What then happens is, a natural progression is the dog will, those hormones will subside, the dog will start to settle and it will naturally sort itself out. It is the most challenging time, I say this on my annoyingly adolescent webinar, 
which is uh, again it's a free um uh, webinar that is available when you join the jungle book um one of the points that i talk about is that often people make the most errors in their training in adolescence and often the stuff that your dog presents to you will come and go and sort itself out so often you'll get things like sensitivity apprehension aggression um boundary testing all classic um uh, uh, adolescent behaviors because of hormones and often people will try and deal with the problem with a dog that didn't have one prior and they will create an issue um so my advice is avoid any confrontation any any challenges as such um so that you don't put an, an, an issue in long term i would say statistically probably the most dogs that end up in rescue or behavioral cases are adolescent dogs or behavioral pr problems caused in adolescence so really really challenging time um, I, my advice is to back off and emphasize more on domestics, okay? Um, but ride it out. Most times, more than not, it will absolutely um, uh, pacify. Ah, Susie Renstar, yay, ledge. Okay, would you introduce a platform for position changes? Yes, platforms are great, um, but because I want my dogs to be a bit dynamic, a platform can hinder that. I like them to be a little bit, um, snappy like I don't mind if they anticipate and they're a bit sparky and they're moving around because I can refine that later on I don't want them um, too mechanical and poised in their position changes because I can bring um, I can bring that stillness in later on I would rather have them a bit sprightly and sharp and snappy um, and almost guessing initially before I put a verbal cue on it so the dog is really really fast and snappy and pump bump bump then I can refine it and get more um, accuracy all right and platforms, because my dogs have a strong foundation of platforms, I can bring that in to create more stability um, later on. All right. OK. Anybody else got any questions? OK, I think I'll just give it a moment. Have a sip of coffee. OK, so hope. Oh, yeah. Any advice around resource guarding, please? OK, so as it's you, Susie. Um, so resource guarding, um, with young dogs is very, I'm going to say easy to fix with older dogs. It can be challenging, um, depending on what the resource guarding, what it is that the dog is resource guarding. So if it's food, say for example, the dog is guarding its food at dinner time. What I would do is give the dog, put an empty bowl, place some food in it, place the food, the bowl down, let the dog eat the food, lift the bowl up, feed the dog, put some more food in. And so the dog understands that there's nothing to be threatened by. Normally dogs resource guard because there is a, there's a scarcity issue. So they, they believe that that's the only one. A way of combating that is to provide more. So if the dog is resource guarding food, for example, out of a dish, I'm teaching the dog that there's more to come from me. There's nothing to be concerned about. Exchanging for higher value um, toys, food, etc. is a great way to, make, to teach the dog to be compliant. So, for example, if your dog has a, um, a toy that they want to guard, okay, I would find something that counteracted this. So if my dog um, rated this at um, having problems with the cockapoo, yeah, it's quite a common cocker, cocker spaniel issue. So if the dog is obsessed, say, for example, with something like that, I would either get another one or I would get something that could trump this in value. Sorry, trump, the use of the word trump. Um, but yeah, as something that was, uh, that was higher value than this. If it was food, another toy, etc., and do an exchange. So the dog has this, I offer it something that is more valuable than this item, and I teach the dog to um, to willingly give up the thing in order to um, get something more valuable or actually get it back or get something of equal value. Um, resource guarding is something that, as I say, a lot of dogs have, um, certainly um, working breeds have, because we've bred that possession into them. Um, cocker spaniels, it's not, um, <laughs> yeah, quick and beat you. Um, cocker spaniels, um, it's very, very common in. Um, and so what I would do is not have anything the dog could, um, grab, um, and get in a situation where I'm going to get confrontational. So for example, don't have any toys out that the dog is likely to rehearse that behavior on. Cause what you don't want is the dog to get, say a kid's toy on the floor, um, take it, you're in a situation where you've got to get that back off the dog and you're confronting the dog. If need be, have an X pen set up so the puppy or the dog can be in that situation. So if you do have young children in that environment, 
the dog isn't able to take toys and get into that that situation um again build up the exchange game um play it's your choice so again i, I referenced that earlier great thing to teach the dog refer them to um dogsthat.com on uh, susan garrett's um, blog um about it's your choice um that will be a great thing to teach them and definitely um reinforcing them with higher value uh, or exchanging them for higher value um items is is massively a thing i would work on all right anybody else got any questions before i sign off oh did you notice that's a little sober coffee just in case i'll give it a minute would it be the same process okay brie asked would it be the same process if the dog resource guards with other dogs in the house but not with people um yes so with dogs what i do with my dogs is a lot of um i use their name to cue them they can have something so for example i'll say great's turn mighty's turn super's turn and so forth so i teach them from a very young age that they have to um be okay with taking food from um well, sorry having food with other dogs around them if need be if you have dogs that's likely to be an issue um I would um, use um, two crates and do that way or a station. So a platform or a bench or something like that. So that you can have always think safety first. You don't want them to be an, in an instance where their dogs feel they need to be confrontational and bam. And then you have something on to what happened. Always think safety first. One dog in a crate, one dog out, feed the dog. If you and you can rotate them around, ideally have two crates set up so that, you know, there's no overlap of the two dogs um, and teach them to get on and to cohabit. So um, I had this with a major, major issue with my boxer and my one of my collies when um, after he sired a litter of puppies and one of my other females came into season subsequently after that, um, I had major, major issues. And I, it took me about three months to resolve with them where I had to do lots of um, what, corporate co cooperation games. Um, with dogs that if you have a attention you're always going to have to manage it to a degree when you have x amount of dogs i have 11 dogs i there is management of personality so i know um that i have to watch them at certain times like the girls have just been in season so i would just monitor the boys behavior around them or, or leading up to more importantly so that i i don't put them in a situation where they can be confrontational um so resources can be applicable to um uh food um items scent um etc etc so um i did a multi-dog chat with my friend um kathy santo on my youtube page uh, which talked about um, multi-dog households and and resource guarding as one of those things so have a look on that i'm pretty sure it's on my youtube page kathy santo and i talked about multi-dog households or it will be on my um open to all facebook group Okay, so have a look there and, and there'll be a more detailed um, guide to um, working with multiple dogs in the household. But yeah, definitely something to be mindful of. Um, doo -doo -doo, thank you so much. Susie also asked, when do puppies stop eating their poo? So if the puppy's eating their poo, generally it would imply there's a deficit in the, in the dog. So um, I would, the first thing I'd look at is diet um, and to consider looking at either changing or upping the dog's food. Um, because it often dogs that eat their own feces, um, one, it can be habit, two, it's a lacking, a lacking of something. Um, people have recommended things like banana in their diet. Um, I haven't had that with my dogs, I have to say, because this, they um, have a really, really, really good diet that gives them everything they need. Um, it can be habitual, you just need to be on it, really. As soon as the puppy goes to the toilet, pick up their part of their feces so they don't get into a habit because once they get into that habit it's really really difficult to um, break um but normally i would first look at diet and possibly upping the ante of what they're getting um if that's the same puppy that's resource guarding i would look at it as definitely something the dog is lacking i, I would definitely look at diet and upping their food or giving them more okay i have one what food would you recommend please so uh, susie so shamelessly I am um, sponsored or I work a lot with a company called Pro Dog Raw, Raw which is a raw food company. It, I've fed a lot of raw food over the years. I raw food feed my dogs. I'm not, you know, biblical about it. Do whatever's right for you. That's the one I would recommend. Um, 
pro dog raw um but by all means if there's another good raw food that you know um in my opinion it's the best out there and i fed as i say the lot uh, a, a lot of different foods so i would recommend pro dog raw and it's raw food um but yeah but that's my personal opinion as i say i don't push it on people um but yeah i would definitely look at diet okay i have one i have one who argues resource class my treat pouch from other dogs out and about so yeah, um, I would definitely do resource uh, guarding or treat patches are a really, really common thing for, sport, a lot, for a lot of dogs because we place so much emphasis on them and obviously they smell great. Um, so um, I would definitely do some work on um, getting the, the, the dog to be compliant and happy with um, um, other dogs approaching, etc, etc. Doing um, uh, station games, having a dog. So all my dogs have a cue which means go to your bed so that if there um is a situation where i need everybody to move out of my way i can send them all to bed and they understand to remain there that stems from the crate games um again susan garrett is in the crate games um I, that's a really really important thing to teach my for my dogs because i have so many so i know that say for example um feeding time would be an, a, a situation where they could get really really aroused and frenzied now i i don't do it now i have to say because everybody understands that they don't get fed until they hold position there so they all offered a, a, a stillness and a calmness and i shape that with them so they understand that everybody will wait patiently on their spot waiting to be fed because they understand that if they do that they're going to more likely to receive their their bulb if they're moving around and fidgeting then they don't so they very quickly learn that so reset to be fair what he liked to do was bark and demand his food and I just never reinforced him when he barked and demanded and when he used to jump up and count, try and counter surf. Um, so I just never reinforced him for it. And I waited for him to stop. And when he stopped initially, I'd instantly put his bowl down. And now he literally sits in the corner waiting for me to feed him. And all my dogs will do that in varying forms. OK, um, when you have lots of dogs, you have to have these things in place. Otherwise, those are the situations when you could have problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and agree. My pup has hunts for feces or our, of our other dogs, but we know it's because they don't digest as well as they have done. They are on the same food. So yes, tidy up ASP, don't he doesn't eat his own. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it does, um, feces eating is a, um, is a really, really challenging one if you have multiple dogs, because you have to be really, really on it to, to break the habit. But, um, and I definitely look at things like diet, etc. for the individual dog. Um, but yeah, all right. So, Anybody else got any final questions? Okay, I think that's it. Okay, so I think that's all the questions. So um, all this week, um, the, my course, The Jungle Book, which is a look into the first 12 months of the life of Reset, who you saw today. Jungle, who I did a live with earlier this week, and Hottie um reset sister who i also did a live early this week um following the first 12 months of how i raise my dogs and everything that i do with them from domestically how i bring a puppy into my home what i do with them to get them settled in the night uh, and then sports specific trainers training and also overcoming challenges with them so um tug challenges is something that i've worked on with hottie arousal issues is something that i primarily worked on with jungle um and then obviously getting reset as a slightly older puppy um starting from the ground up um and retraining things so very different dogs very different issues but lots of content in there i post on um three videos a week um on the each uh, on what's going on in their life um and i don't um hide anything you know i show when you know recall uh, potty lost her recall and she didn't have a recall and how i work through that same with jungle um and, you know that went on for um you know, a little while when i was working through her recall and i show a clip where she's running off and i show how i progress and work through that so it's very much a fly in the wall um insight when you sign up if you want to sign up i'll share the link in the um comments you will be added to a Facebook group. I'll send you a link to a Facebook group, which is where all the content will be. The group has run from last May to this May, um, but will remain open to at least May 2022. And I'm looking to leaving the content on there, um, just depending on um, whether I have it on Facebook or I move it to another part of my website. 
I don't know yet, so that's a technical thing not for you to worry about. But be, just be aware that if you sign up today, you will have access until May 2022. Um, I will stop uploading comment, uh, content from um, May because that will be the year. Um, possibly, I'm toying with the idea of um, um, still populating it, but um, that will depend on this project that I'm working on. Um, but yeah, up until May of this year, you're going to, as I say, three videos a week plus additional videos webinars and people ask questions and I do um, responses to them. Um, so there will be over 150 videos all in um, on what I'm doing with my puppies from, as I say, teaching them shaping skills, overcoming challenging challenges, domestics. So there's something there for everybody. And as I say, um, they're all very different dogs. So all the different things that I'm working on. So if you're interested, sign up, um, closes on Sunday. Um, you have until Sunday. Um, to sign up for the Jungle Book. But unless there's any final questions, I'm going to let you guys enjoy the rest of your evening. It's not been the best days here for weather. Um, so I've been fiddling with the dogs off and on throughout the day. And as I say, working on some videoing from some other projects. But from me, I shall love you and leave you and have a really nice evening and be safe wherever you are in the world. All right. See you later all. Mm -hmm.